Foundation was founded in the year 2012, and we have the mission and vision to reduce um, to, um, to reduce the burden of sickle cell disease in um, in Nigeria because sickle cell disease is, um, is a chronic disease and it's quite debilitating. So Sickle Cell of Life Foundation was founded 10 years ago to reduce the burden of sickle cell disease in, and to create awareness about sickle cell disease in Nigeria. So this study was carried out by Sickle Cell of Life Foundation and sponsored by Gilead Sciences USA. And we are here this morning to disseminate our findings to the community. So, but before we do that, I would like to call the principal investigator to give us a speech. Thank you very much. Uh, to give God all the glory for keeping us alive to do this today. The vision and mission of SCAP is to uh, reduce the bodies of and in doing that, we have different avenues, different avenues to have awareness for prevention purposes to those who don't already have the disease. The second aspect is to take care of those that are already born with the disease. That is care. And the third aspect is to do research on confounding factors, that is factors that can affect the prognosis, that is the, 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 the um, the outcome of this disease in these patients. So we, our only unit is, is a research center where you have uh, new things coming, new work involving, understanding of the disease. What can we do? What are the latest findings? And these are the things that allow you to take proper care of these patients. So our staff has a multidisciplinary approach to sickle cell disease because the big thing that we have different areas looking at different aspects. And if you just see the short introduction we did now, there's a pharmacist, there's a pediatrician, there's a statistician, there is a hematologist. One of us is uh, a virologist. We have all the others helping us to make sure that we really understand what this disease is all about. So we are bringing you in this morning to be able to listen attentively to why we went to the field, what our hypothesis was, that is, what did we think was going to happen when we went to the field? What did we find when we went to the field and collected samples and went to the laboratory to look at them? Then after that, what did we find? And how can we, in the best interest of the patients, in the best interest of the community of Nigerians, bring back what we found in the scientific world in a layman's language to every one of us who will read the newspapers or hear the news. And that's why we are here today. And I hope that the media is listening attentively. The study was the, the study is on dissemination of the prevalence of HPV, hepatitis B virus, hepatitis C virus, HIV among the individuals with and in southwest Nigeria. And we use the battle in the southwest region, which is the third largest city by population in Nigeria, with adequate reference tertiary institutions, secondary and primary institutions. But when you want to everything is the research was conducted in affiliation with the genetics research units, the head of that unit, current head. Is Professor Chinedu Abanola. You know, when I step down, she steps up. <laughs> <laughs> she is a pharmacist by profession. And we are doing this in collaboration because our laboratory is one of the best laboratories in this new stage. The study commenced in 2018 and we used 1,017 people with sickle cell disease, that's a large number of patients. We also took samples from 1,017 non sickle cell patients. The prevalence of these infections was not different in those with or without transfusion, both in cases and control. 
That is, even those who have uh, the, the cases, and those in the cases, and those in the control, we find that these infections are not different when they have blood transfusion and when they don't have. If you are without sickle cell disease, we looked at those that had uh, transfusion. We looked at those that didn't have transfusion. We found that even among those that had transfusion, there's no difference between them and those who don't have as to the rate of that. So what we then did was, why is this so? Why is what we are, we are finding so? Because it's different from what we thought we find. Then we send Dr. Rapa to the field and we say, okay, help us look at this. What is causing this infection? Because when we did the analysis, we didn't only look for blood transition. We measured their blood transition. We measured all that things that they are doing. It's a big study. We look at so many things in these people. We ask them questions, we write it down, they tell us, we record it, and then we go and do the statistics on it. And what Dr. Akra found was that something called multiple sexual partners. That is those changing their wives, those changing their girlfriends. Tattoo in the body. Tattoo. When you start picking all these needles into your body, sharp objects, needles will come. They significantly increase the risk of hepatitis B infection. While having a body incision or tattoo was a higher risk for HIV infection in the study. I hope you are getting me. That means we thought it was blood transfusion. We went there. There is blood transfusion 10 times. In fact, we found exactly 10 times of blood transfusion in sickle cell patients as compared with control. But when we then look for the infection, we find that the infection is lower in the in the transfusion. What is causing that? We now find that the, 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 the problem we have in this control people is because many of them go about in relaxed ways. Hey, they can do anything they want. They start doing tattoo on their body, they start changing their wives and partners, and they are doing all these frivolous things, not minding, not knowing that this is these are things that will result in serious infections in their blood. So if if any of them is hospitalized, we still need to subsidize the drugs at least to help them to be to be to get That is the conclusion from the studies. In Nigeria, the incidence of sickle cell has been reported to be higher than any other part of the Sub-Saharan Africa. And transmission transmissible infections, which we call TTIs, um, including HPV, HCV, and HIV, which we have been hearing about, they are among the most frequent complications uh, in individuals with sickle cell infection. And the reason is what we have been told earlier, the fact that uh, blood transmission is always regular among them. Notwithstanding, apart from blood transmission, there are other risky uh, behaviors that have been implicated in TTI. And so we felt that um, we should investigate it to see whether that could also come out uh, more strongly than the study. So the purpose of this particular aspect of the study was to just investigate what factors are associated with uh, transmission, transmissible infection among patients and control. And that is targeting of um, educating people on the danger of having multiple sexual partners, partners um, you know, tattooing bodies and use sharing of sharp objects, that that could reduce the risk of having TTI in our community. I will start by mentioning further hepatitis B virus infection affect approximately 240 million people all over the world. And that is like 6% of the world population. And the hepatitis B virus infection is predominantly high in the oceanic area, sub saharan Africa, Asia, and there in this region where they say they are predominantly high, the, the infection rate is like approximately, if you have 100 people, you will have at least 10%, 10 out of 100 people that are infected in that region. So you can see how common 
hepatitis B virus infection is and why we have to see it out to look at how it affects our blood levels. And besides the fact that it affects it's very common, it's not just common, when those that are infected are have the potential of having their liver completely consumed by the infection. And when the liver is consumed by the infection, they either have liver cirrhosis and uh, or liver uh, liver cirrhosis, liver cancer, they are prone to all those infections. So we are in attempt to arrest the progression of this virus in this individual. It is important we detect it early when they are infected. He voted on three uh, it's on three pivots. Awareness, care, and research. Advocacy is a major part of that. But most of our advocacy in SCAP so far has been in, entrenched in our awareness. So for example, when we go out to any of the, we go to schools, we go to marketplaces, we go to churches, we go to mosques to meet the community. It is during that time that we tell them all these hazards. That school children, we can't just be going about frivolously and believing everything is okay, it's not okay. So we inform them there. And then we also invite government officials a lot of the times. And one we had last year, the Ministry of Health was there. The non communicable disease officer was there. But four of them came from five of the ministry. I just want to reiterate what I've already heard. We heard about the triple terms of reference or tri tripod span for scan, which is awareness, care, and research. And today we have showcased the research. It is one of our strong cardinal points. The, this research leads us back to the other two points. Care. No matter how this result has been presented, it's obvious that we have individuals, sickle cell and non sickle cell people, who have these infections. The hepatitis B, C, and HIV infections and they need to be treated. They need care. They need to be managed. They will need drugs. I'm sure you saw that as part of the recommendations. And many times we go cap in hand appealing to pharmaceutical industries to donate, but it doesn't work that way all the time. So they need drugs, they need to be identified, they need to be cared for. Or else, like we heard, for those that have age and hepatitis B, the liver will be damaged. Hepatitis. So that's part of the follow up that we require. And don't forget, we carried out these studies on those who are not even in the hospital, those who are not ill. So we still have those that are ill. And the prevalence, when you compare it in literature, is still significant enough for what we have heard. So they need care. We talked about awareness. Yes, we go around different places creating awareness. Another area that we want to promote is curriculum. I remember as a director of general studies, I taught civil cell. I introduced it to general studies as part of our contemporary health program. So we need to put it in our curriculum even from primary to tertiary institutions so that people are aware of this stuff. And my app up to you. Hello. <laughs>